We had to go out and raise money to do this. And it's support of people like you and your parents and your pastors and the people in your churches that are going to help film producers like us to go out and take a chance to be successful. So uh, I'll stop right there, and now we'll get to the fun stuff. Who wants to hear from Daniel? That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Daniel, uh, uh, we've done this a couple times. This is, uh, this is our third city in five days. We have four more cities to go, and that's eight. Tomorrow afternoon from 1 to 3, we're going to be at the Moraz Theater. Daniel's going to be signing uh, posters and one sheets there. Anybody that comes there gets a free ticket as well. So all of you who want to come are a free ticket. If you have anybody that doesn't go to Moraz High School and wants to come to the movie, bring them tomorrow to meet Daniel, and we'll give them a free ticket as well. Uh, one last thing that I think is going to be pretty cool, especially being part of this pep rally today. Gentlemen over there in the white, we're coming to game night to cheer for you. Hopefully you guys have a good night. So Daniel, why don't we talk a little bit about uh, what it was like to actually work with Selena Gomez. I don't know about my girl. Amazing experience in my life. I'm sure you can all imagine that. I mean, who doesn't want to work with the most of the donors? Who doesn't want to? <laughs> cool. There's somebody about it. Yeah, right? You don't know want to work with the donors? Why? What? Because of the BBs? <laughs> Maybe I can shine the super rock of beat and get around that, that uh, situation. Um, so no, I'll see you as a great place. Yeah. You guys want to go to this? You don't even look like you go to school, buddy. You look like you just came from the college campus. Hey, coach. Wait, that's the coach? Are you the coach? <laughs> you should be, bro. Ah, right, cool. You look like you look at Scott. some morals in the show, which is nice, but being a part of something like Brothers Keeper really has been hugely influential, not just in my choices of what I would like to do with acting, but also just in my life. I mean, how many people think they've done something that they will not be forgiven for? Well, let's be honest. I don't know. I mean, come on, y'all. Like, really? Who eats and sleeps? So put your hands up. Right? 
who thinks that you've done something to somebody that, like, we just did that one? Yeah, you won't be forgiven now. Who thinks that, you know, maybe there's something that was done to you that you will never forgive that person for? Do we all experience that? Let's get, okay, let's talk, like, high school stuff, like, like, relationships. That boy ever broken up with you and you're never gonna forgive him, or, um, you really thought you were in love with somebody, but, like, it just didn't work out, and you don't know how you forgive that person because they're so mean and cruel, because they didn't want to try the feelings you had. Anybody? Is that relatable? Or a homework assignment you were given that you didn't like? I don't know. What, what, what can you relate to? But anyways, I don't know. The message of the game is just really touched me. Uh, we all go through our experience in life, right? We all have our ups, we all have our downs, we all make choices. Some of us have great guidance, some of us not so great guidance. My, but, but we're not going there. We're not going there. But we forgive our level, right? Don't we? We don't condone the I'm not going to cut my TV on her station or any of that, but we forgive her, right? She's going through something that's inspired her to do what she's got to do for herself. And some people are attracted to it, some people are not. I don't know if any of us are really attracted to it, and uh, oh, you are. <laughs> well, we forgive you, bro. We forgive you, bro. That's what we're here to do. The spread this message to people. Say, it's back on track with that. So we all, we all can relate to that, right? Well, there is forgiveness. You know, we have to forgive ourselves for the things that we've done. I forgive myself for a lot of the things I've done. There's a few things that's still processing. You know, I'll be honest. Like, living in Hollywood is cool and awesome and fun and flashy and stuff. But sometimes not really, you know? It's kind of just really just like real life. We just experience real things. We get hurt, we eat, and we sleep like people do. I don't know. I mean, I'm still going through something right now where I'm working on every single day to wake up and to remind myself to forgive this person for that. Forgive that person for that because I know there's still something in my heart that I carry around, which I uh, channel into this film, <laughs> doing the bad guy stuff. Um, that's one thing that some of you might not know is that uh, oh, when we brought Daniel in, Daniel's actually the bad guy in the film. It's, it's no secret, any of you that have watched the trailer, uh, our film is a 1950s period piece about two identical twin brothers who are physically, they're identical. One, but spiritually, they're complete polar opposites. One of the boys, the twins, wants to be a preacher, and the other boy uh, is angry at God, he's angry at humanity, he's angry at his friends at school uh, because so many bad things have happened to these boys. And uh, uh, the, the good boy, Pete, in our film, is in love with, and after, after high school, uh, he's going to go away to college, he's going to go away to seminary and become a preacher. And the only thing he wants to do is marry his girlfriend, Maggie Malloy. Well, in the movie, Game of Kills, Maddie, he actually, uh, in the bathroom, and you can see it in the crime scene, he actually kills this for a girl. I don't want to say too much more about what happens after that, but uh, in the short story that we developed into this movie, it started off as a 23 page short story, and in that short story, the Gordon character is actually killed three minutes into the film, three minutes into the story, and we changed that character. Once we cast a Daniel, we, we went out to uh, we went out to Daniel's manager. Uh, we of course looked at his his record, uh, his international movie database, his experience on my calling, his experience on Lucas Raymond Place, his experience. He's appeared on ER. He worked with John Samuels on ER. And uh, as soon as we engage Daniel's agent, uh, I'll let you take a look there. What happened from your end when we went out to your agent? What was it about one of those people? Yeah, this is to talk about that. Um, the agents, yeah, you can imagine going from a business to something like a little bit more uh, heavy with a message. Um, it wasn't so supported by some people that I worked with in, in, the, in the agent side, and they're like, oh, well, same thing, so you probably won't like it. I was like, do you know me? Um, let me take a look at it. Let's touch that again. Yeah, because it was a faith-based project, because it wasn't uh, a horror story or a zombie movie, they actually thought the agent might not be a good, a good fit for you because we were trying to produce a faith based film. That's kind of how the industry is. The industry doesn't care about price. The industry doesn't care about good messages, no matter what religious you are. They care about money. That's the bottom line. Their studios, they've perfected their ability to make these hundred million dollar movies, and they've, they've done real well in that in the last hundred years. Companies like ours, again, have to rely on people like all of you, your churches, 
and your pastor to get involved to show what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do, guys. On, on Friday night, November 1st, there's two movies coming out in Hollywood. Big, big movies. Ender's Game. Anybody heard of Ender's Game? Have you heard of Last Vegas? Another big movie with a, a Hollywood cast? I want to go see Last Vegas. But you've not heard of Brothers either, right? Exactly. Yeah. Coming up, coming up on that Friday night, November 1st. And this is what we're telling the whole industry we're going to do. In these 11 cities, in Boaz, Alabama, Brothers Keeper is going to beat those Hollywood films. In every single one of these, that's our prediction. That's what we're praying for. That's what we're working so hard for. That's what everybody in this room can help us accomplish. To show Hollywood, you don't have to have a zombie. You don't have to have nudity. You don't have to have swear words. You can have a good movie with a good message. If you have support, you can, you can bring it out to the masses like we're doing Friday from the first. So, uh, uh, thank you. One of, the, one of the things that people really don't know is that we, uh, when we casted Daniel, uh, I, was in, I was in Georgia, and my partners called me. We actually casted the twins, our two twins in the movie, Alex and Graham Miller, and Daniel on the same day. My partners called me in Georgia when I was raising money about four months before we made the movie. He said, hey, we got some moments. We'd already done our diligence. Again, just to kind of go back to that, Daniel, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but... So at that point, you're, you're reading a script. It's a faith-based film. Your agent says, this might not be the best thing. This isn't Sony. This isn't Paramount. How did it go from there? And by the way, you know how honored we are that you did come to work on our film. Well, uh, after reading the script, it really, really, like 20 pages into the script, I had some tears fall. And I was like, what is going on? And then I kept reading it. And like another 20 pages, I was like, shocked at what was taking place. But then, by the end of the script, there's like at least four or five or six moments where I cry immediately, like as from my character's perspective, kind of. And I thought to myself, man, like I was moved by just reading the script. How I'm able to come and take that passion that I got from that and put it into the film and like live action. I wonder if we can actually like move some other people and maybe even you know, like influence some of your lives for the better. I don't. I'd love to say like change your life, but that's a little out there. At least influence you to make some changes in your lives or see, you know, the bigger picture of things and being able to forgive yourselves and find forgiveness through God and through just your relationships with each other. I mean, anyways, um, once I read this script, it just blew my mind. I just I really felt like I had to be a part of it. And, uh, do something a lot more positive and constructive with what, you know, the gift that God has given me and performing and just doing stuff like this and talking to kinds of people. I mean, you know, why not spread a positive message with that? It really is just called to me. And so I thought, like, you know, yeah, this is definitely something I have to be a part of. I don't know how many of you, how many of you here have actually seen the film? How many of you are in the student leader groups? And by the way, uh, thank you very much to all of you who took the time uh, to prepare that report for us. Uh, the Chandler and Mary gave us last night. I'm taking that report, and I'm reading that report to my partners this evening on our team conference call. We have every Friday night for two hours. I'm going to read that whole report to my partners, and uh, they're going to be just as honored as I am uh, that you all took the time. One of the things that you're going to uh, uh, find out as, uh, as you get older, and this is one thing that I'll leave you with, and then we'll let Daniel close, is that I'd like to point out one thing. One person here in Boaz, one person, and it could have been any one of you here, is the reason why we're here. That person standing right there, his name is Nate Orker. Nate yeah. is a pastor. Thank you, Nate. My, my point is, you all are, are young people, you're growing up, you're turning into adults. You people have the, every one of you individually has the ability to make something happen. Something pretty, pretty big. Not maybe not a movie, maybe not you know, anything in entertainment, but maybe in your church or maybe in your school right here. You all have the ability to make things happen if you take the initiative, if you dream high enough and work hard enough with those dreams. Nate has worked for two months before I even met him, before we committed to say, yeah, you know what? We are going to bring our movie to Boaz, Alabama. I've had people ask me, why Boaz, Alabama? So you know what the population of Boaz, Alabama is? I do, and guess what? Boaz, Alabama is going to compete with Atlanta and Tallahassee and Fort Myers and Fort Worth.